Well, now, as I, I begin to, to get into the refining, kind of the, the finishing portion of this painting, I'd like to have the major objects finished before I get to the smaller ones. The smaller ones can kind of come at the end when I decide to just add a few things here and there. And so obviously one of the major things that I need to get to is of course the canoe. I've also got some ideas of some ducks sketched in the sky as well as on the water, some small ones way back here. But first things first is I'd really like to get this canoe refined. Now at this point, it's just been a rough idea. I'm gonna have to paint over the top of this completely before I can call it finished. So let's get to it right now. I've got a bunch of colors set up on my palette and let's see, what do I have here? Titanium white, this is quinacridone burnt orange. It's kind of a, it's a really deep sort of transparent orange. It's kind of a cool color. It gives you a nice deep reddish tone, which I like. So it'll be good for the shadows, things like that. And then if you mix it, I've got permanent green. You mix it with permanent green, really becomes dark. And I just kind of like that tone. So I'm gonna experiment with some of that. I've also got some burnt sienna and then cad yellow, naphthol red. Of course, my permanent green, permanent light green, I think this is, and then carbon black. And I've got, this is golden fluid acrylics, golden, 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 and then I've got Liquitex soft body, green, yellow, and white. Some colors I like to be more transparent, like the goldens. Other colors, such as white, I always like having a, a base of white that's a little bit thicker. Um, if you watch my videos, I know I say this from time to time, but I just like a thick base when it comes to white, and especially things like yellow as well. Uh, just nicer to have more of an opaque color. So I've got a liner brush, but I've also, let's see, yeah, I'm gonna go with a, go with a, what is this, filbert brush, half inch wide it looks like. So I'll probably start with the filbert brush. What I wanna do first is block in the largest portion of our canoe, which would be kind of the middle I'm gonna mix some burnt sienna and red together. Give me some yellow. Give me some green. More green. So green is an opposite color of red, I believe. So it kind of tones things down, makes them a little darker. I think I want some more red in there. Okay, I'm gonna start with this. Now, if you're painting a canoe or any kind of a boat or any object at all, there's really no rhyme or reason why I'm choosing this color. It's just a color that I think is nice for a canoe, kind of fit the, the picture nice. So what I'm doing to start here is I'm thinking about the shape of the canoe. Now, the shape of this canoe on the sides of the boat, it'll kind of wrap around, up top will be kind of basically facing more upwards and it'll wrap around and then obviously curve down towards the underside. So what it's gonna look like is the top is gonna have a little shadow because we've got a rim around the top. Now this is just a good example of just understanding objects in general and how to paint them, whether this is a canoe or backpack or cabin, just have to really visualize how the shape of whatever object you're painting is and what orientation is it, what's around it. So for example, I could take some black here and we're gonna have to do this at some point, but you can see we've got a rim. Maybe this is an aluminum rim just kind of some trim right along the edge. And underneath, we're of course gonna have a shadow. So, I'm painting this very loosely at this point. But, that shadow is gonna exist 
something like that. Um, it'll be in that general area at least. And same thing goes with the inside of the canoe. We've got another rim on the other side of the boat. So, we've got a shadow started for there. And of course, as we get up towards the front of the canoe, it kind of gets down in and underneath the nose. It's going to be really deep and dark down in there. So, I know that this color is going to exist down there eh, to some degree, but I like to overdo the darks and then paint back over the top. So we've got some darks established. Now, if we just keep thinking about the darks, and this is just a, probably a good method to go about any object, is kind of start with the darks. I like to start with the shadows anyways. Underneath, um, under where the canoe meets the water, I'm going to have some shadow cast. It's going to be very dark down there. Now, a lot of this... A lot of this is, is a bit over dramatic at this point. It's kind of too dark. But it's a great starting point. So we've got these nice darks. I'm going to wash that color off. Let's get back to the actual body of the canoe. And I think about this color a little bit more. I'm going to try this burnt, this burnt orange mixed with some green, slightly darker color. I'm going to go right up to the edge of that black. Now, this is essentially blocking in this color. I'm going to try some red in there as well. Just experimenting. I'm just trying to decide what color I want my canoe to actually be. And that's just my personal opinion compared to kind of what's around it. Just trying to make the canoe fit into the picture as best I can. So I'm really just trying to get a nice, solid base of paint on this port. There's not a lot of paint on this portion thus far. I've really ignored it. It's just been more so kind of a wash of color. I really want this to go on nice and thick. So I'm just going to go ahead and block in the color of this canoe. Get this nice dark deep red tone. I'm just trying to leave some of that black up top and down below. Watch that filbert brush. You can really do some neat things with these filberts. One of my favorite brushes, I think it's the most versatile type of brush. You can use the flat edge for these wide areas and look at how nice I can get when it gets nice. When I get to a narrow spot, just really adjusts perfectly for me. So, filbert brush, one of my favorites. Now, I'm painting this on not quite as thick on the inside of the canoe. I want some of that color. I think what I want the inside of the canoe to be is more brown. So I'm going to grab some yellow and burnt sienna along with some black. Yeah. yeah I want it to be more of like a yellow brown. Maybe there's a wood interior. And uh, I'm going to take some black. Yeah, nice deeper, deeper tone here. Now, I'm not worried about this trim yet. If I go over the trim like I just did right there, that's all right. 
if I was trying to be careful around it, I'd just be kind of wasting time right now. Okay. Now, where the sun comes down, you have to really watch whatever object that we paint, we have to watch out for what's really around it. What, what kind of environment is it in? Okay, so let's think about this. We've got some light coming from the sun behind the canoe. And then over here, we've got a campfire coming in from the side. Now, how is that gonna play in relation to, to how the canoe is positioned? Like, what, how is that gonna bounce off our object? And in this case, obviously, it's a canoe. So we've got light coming in from behind this side of the boat. So let's grab some yellow. That sun is kind of a yellowish. And actually, I might want to switch to a smaller brush at this point. Just help me control this touch more. I'm going to get to, let's see here, kind of an old, kind of an old round brush, just a medium size. Okay. Let's grab, yeah, I'm making some orange right now. Touch of black. Let's see what this looks like to start. Hmm. Maybe some more black. That might be a, a bit too light. So let's try some more black. Hmm. I'm gonna keep adding some black here. Try this. Yeah, that's probably a bit better. Okay. Now, I don't wanna to go too far off to the side. I wanna keep the focus of this highlight on the inside here just right underneath our reflections of the sun. So just kind of make the sunlight a little, it just makes everything um, Make what am I trying to say? It makes everything appear to, to, to make more sense to us mentally when we look at it. If we've got light that's kind of bouncing off to the side, it might look a little bit weird. I'd rather have the focus of this highlight to be directly underneath that sunbeam so that it really nails down the, the, the point of us trying to create the illusion of sunlight. Probably doesn't make any sense what I just said there. Okay. So just like that, I think you can kind of see what I'm saying. Be selective is my point. So we've just got some highlight right there. Now it's a bit rough at this point, but I'm gonna let that dry. Now, next thing, campfire, okay? So obviously we want to have some kind of a highlight established on the left side of our boat. So I've got some, eh, kind of some reddish orange, a bit of white mixed in there. This is just going to be a brighter color, brighter shade of red. Let's see what we can do here. Right on the edge. Beautiful. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna let this dry. Reshape the edge real quick right there. Okay, I'm just gonna let that dry. Now, let's go back to the inside here, which this is already pretty much dry. Mix up some more 
some darker brownish red tone. And right on the edge, I'm just gonna add some color and just kind of buff it on just to soften these edges up a bit, blend them into the darks. Beautiful. Okay. Now, on the inside of the canoe, a lot of times we have uh, uh, ribs, I want to say, some kind of structure that holds the canoe together. Maybe this is a wood canoe, um, just some kind of support system, even if this is a plastic or fiberglass canoe. It needs some type of support system somewhere across the canoe horizontally. So I'm going to create a nice dark shade. even darker brownish color. And let's say that there's one, try to think about this. So maybe we've got one here, one there. Let's say there's four. Okay. So we'll have one back here, one about right there, one about right there, and another one right there. So, boom, bam, bang. Now, I'm trying to imagine the inside of this canoe, what's going on, what's the shape of it? The back side of that canoe sweeps down, comes around, and then back up towards us. So I'm trying to follow that design with these ribs, the support system going down and then making it just kind of disappear. Okay, I'm gonna grab some black, especially make this one darker. Just like that, a little bit more right there. And then just underneath the, the trim here, let's add some darker color. Beautiful, now we've got some, some different things going on in the inside, it's just going to add to the, the effect of this canoe all that much more. It's going to really make it pop. Okay, looking good. Now, next thing is we want to have some kind of highlights. We're just going to let this dry for now. We're going to have some kind of highlights on the body. So because we have a shape here that's rounded and popping out towards us, it's going to be slightly lighter because of that shape that's maybe being exposed. Maybe it's reflecting some light from the sky down. Um, it's going to be lighter than it is going to be down underneath where it's curving down towards the shadow. So let's get a lighter tone across the side of the canoe. Grab some white, grab some red, kind of a pink. Let's add some green to that. Okay, so it's a pretty neutral color. I wonder how that would look. It might be good to have it somewhat neutral because it is in the shadows somewhat. I'm going to try it. Yep, I like it already. So, with this round brush, pretty small round brush, I'm going to start to imagine the shape of this canoe and how it's going to reflect light Just back and forth, back and forth. Not worried about making sure this is really nice and smooth yet. Just want to have the general idea in place before I get further along.
all the way up to the very front here. Okay, get some more of that color as we get back into this area. Use my hands. Really blend that, fan that around. I move my hands very quickly because it dries fast. This is really going to blend it out a lot better. Okay, that's, I mean, there's not a lot to do with that at this point. It looks really good. You can see what I'm trying to do now, hopefully. Beautiful. So we've got just a subtle highlight across the body. Now let's think about maybe some areas that are curving. Let's think about the bottom of the body, the part that's getting close to the water. Let's add some red and some black, some green. Try some of this quinacridone color. Try a bunch of it. Okay. So pretty dark color. You know what, let's go even darker. More green, maybe just some black. Black in this quinacridone. Let's try that. Okay. Right along the bottom, just sort of blending that down low. Fan that out. Take some more of this color and just put it right towards the back here. Put some water on my fingers, just Really push that around. Add some more up top. pretty good. like it so far. Let's add even more of a highlight on the side of that body. Let's take some white. What did we do? Green, red. I don't know. White, green, red. Let's try that. Yep, a little brighter. Okay. I'm gonna dare for it. Go for it. Perfect. Worked out good. Sometimes the fingers can not always go as planned, but it's working pretty good at this point. Now, the edge of the canoe here where we've got our highlight. I'm gonna take some red, some burnt sienna, some yellow. I'm gonna try this color. Maybe a little bit of that dark. Yeah, a little bit of that, a little more of that dark color. Right on the back side of the highlight. I'm gonna create an in-between color. It's kind of a transition. Beautiful. That's all I need to do. 
you can really, it's so easy to overthink some of these highlights. That's going to be easily good enough. Now, I think I could create even more of a highlight. You know, we've got some blue in the sky. Maybe that edge, that back edge of the canoe here would reflect some blue. Let's just add some blue to it, see how it looks. I can always go back. Okay. Very light pressure with my fingers right now. I don't want to pull up any paint. I could easily pull up paint underneath right now because I know it's not all dry yet, but I go for it anyways. I'm very impatient. So yeah, that's, that's looking better. I like it. Maybe I could even get away with a lighter color up front here. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe I need to go back to some red and some green. It's a work in progress. Sometimes, too, you just have to let it go. No one's going to really know. Okay. Looking good. Now, next thing. We've got to have some kind of seats, some, some crossbars, maybe a yoke inside of this canoe. So I'm going to take some white. I'm just going to make some gray. So white and black. Silver. Okay. So, so I, I want, I want this to be the front of the canoe actually. Yeah. Cause they pulled it in. So we got the front of the canoe, back of the canoe. So the back of the canoe is back here. So that seat is going to be sitting somewhere right here. Maybe it's a one man canoe. Yeah, I think we've got a one man canoe. So I'm going to go with that. So this is just maybe a support bar on the back. I think I can get away with that. Now the seat So we've got the the bar on the back of the seat. Now because it's a one man canoe that seat is going to slit sit slightly towards the back end because of course there's going to be extra room for your legs and whatnot in front of the seat. So that's things you just got to have to really consider when it comes to any object. You have to really start talking to yourself what needs to be in place? How is this going to look? You know, what, why, where would I be putting the seat and why? And that's something that I have to consider all the time. I like to anyways. So I think it really makes a difference in the end. Gives you that extra edge of realism. So there's the seat. The seat will sit on the inside. Um, not sure what kind of seat there's going to be. Like a wicker seat. So, okay, so let's say each edge of the seat is like that. And you'll sit in the middle. They'll be like, we'll, we'll get to it. It'll be like a wicker, wicker seat or something. 
Now the front, man, I don't know if that bar, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna act like there is no bar. I think that bar might be, yeah, it's gonna be hidden. It's gonna be, there's gonna be a support bar up front right here and we'll keep that hidden. Now I'm gonna take, dab off a lot of that water. I'm gonna take some more white. So brighter silver here and let's get the trim. Okay, now I'm going to be very conscious about the width of the trim because as the trim moves around the canoe, it's going to change perspectives. So the trim is going to be thinner up here than it is back here because when we're looking down at it, we're looking down on the, the, the flat part of it. So it's going to be up here wider. And then as it comes up towards the edge, it's going to wrap around and we're going to see it from the side. So it's going to be thinner up here. And so we got to keep that in mind. That's just the process of me talking to myself whenever I'm doing an object. This is exactly what's going through my head. I'm just constantly talking to myself what needs to be done here, why. Okay, so this, is, this will be a good example of the thickness. So we've got some width here. We're looking more down at it. Okay. Let's just get this across here first. Fill in the, that area. Okay. Now, right here is where the trim is going to come from about like this, and then it's going to curve, and we're going to see more of the side of it through here. So I want to start going. A little bit thinner right through here. Kind of fade it together. Ah. I can always go back and correct. Okay, so we've got slightly thicker than we do here. I mean, it's not that much, but a slight amount. Pretty good. Now, yeah, I have to go back and just kind of clean up some of these edges. Finish that nose off nicely. Okay. Very nice. So, next thing is uh, details. Lots of details that. I need to add to this canoe. Um, yeah, you know, the canoe's looking nice, but we need some shading. Uh, we especially need some something on our chair. We need something to sit on. So I'm going to mix the burnt sienna, the dark gray, brown. A little bit lighter brown than that, maybe. Okay, let's go with that. Let's see what this does for us. I want it to be lighter than that. More white and yellow. Okay, let me try that. I think that'll work. Now we're going to sew a wicker chair. This stage of the painting is the most fun for me because things really start to take shape. They become real, they become alive. But it's also 
the longest portion of the painting. It takes forever. Okay, so we've got some threads going one way. Now we need them going the other way. Come on. The worst part about doing stuff like this is when you actually overlap and you like make a screw up. Oh, it's frustrating because it can come out so perfect or it can come out really weird looking. That looks pretty good. So we've got a nice checkered pattern. Love it. Now that needs to be attached. So we're going to wrap it. over our bars that are tied on. Just like that. Real simple. Okay, <laughs> it looks pretty good, I like it. I'm really excited about that. Cool, perfect. Now, looking good. We need some shading. Okay, just thinking to myself, let's get some shading, let's get some darker gray. Let's try this. Too dark, more white. So, all I'm doing is going to, uh, well, I'm going to be going to all of the objects, but all I'm doing is adding a shadow to these objects that I've laid in. And this is where things start to really come together for you, is when you add the, the shading, it just makes it really makes sense to the viewer once you've got some shadows. I've got darker gray that I'm adding. To the edge. All these small things help out in the end. So, now where else could we get some Shadows, well, we could on their seat, so we could add some shadow to the bottom of the seats, the bottom of these cross members, just like that. Now, next thing we could add some shadows is where these cross members go underneath the rim. Might be kind of dark underneath there. So, now we can add some more black. Really make it dark. Just right there, right there, right there. Okay. I'm gonna get some more the shadow added. Kind of right there and right there. I might grab some white, mix it in. I'm gonna add a second layer of shadow here. Okay, now burnt sienna and black are 
our wicker has got to have some shadows. So I'm going to go right along where I folded it over the rims. I'm just going to add some texture. Just the idea of shadows. I'm not being particular. I'm just going over the top. But it's going to appear like it's a shadow. And then right underneath the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is the ones going right to left, I'm going to add a shadow to those. So, maybe not all the way across, but here and there. Just like that. Looks good. Got a nice chair. The only thing that I'm not quite happy with This back, there's something weird about this back end here. Uh, it's kind of the side needs to be shaped a bit more. Maybe if I take some burnt orange and this quinacridone color, that kind of glaze on. Okay, let's get some black. I just want the shadows to look a bit better underneath this trim especially. not bad though. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to take some more of this quinacridone color. I'm going to add some darker tone up here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I also think that I can shade some of the trim to be a bit darker, especially through here. It's looking really good. I think what I can do I'm going to take some black right on the bottom of the canoe. I want to see if I can't define some kind of line. I want there to be some separation between the canoe and the water. It could be like maybe one of the only areas of the painting that has a true black. I'm always very selective where I have black showing. And that might be one of the only areas where it's actually present at the moment. A lot of the other colors will have blue mixed in with it. Okay, speaking of blue, let's grab some blue, mix it with my black. Hmm. No, I'm actually going to grab some burnt sienna and some white. I'm going to mix it with that. Yep. And just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. just going to create the idea of a reflection in the water. I'm going to start with this burnt sienna color because, of course, it's kind of the color of the canoe itself. But then I want to go back over it with some dark bluish black in certain areas.
just like that. All right, now just thinking about this some more, I take some white, black, yellow, burnt sienna, and I want to go for a kind of a, uh, a grayish, darker orange, some white in there as well. Okay, now, same thing, we got the highlight in the canoe here, and we, I kept that pretty focused right underneath the, the, the sun's reflection in the water, so I think I might want to do that a little bit with A little bit with the, the trim of this canoe. Okay, so what I mean is, I'm gonna take some white, nice bright white. Just like that, just adding a little bit of highlight right in line with the reflection of the water. It's gonna make it look real nice. Now I can brighten some of that highlight on the inside of the canoe as well. Something I might just have to experiment with. That's not bright enough. Just a little bit there. And then I can also take some burnt sienna and some black. And I can lighten I can lighten some of the that trim on the inside. So a lot of it's going to be very small adjustments at this point. Uh, I can add accessories like canoe paddles. Uh, I'm going to want to do that. Some fishing poles maybe inside the canoe. Different things like that. Um, one example that I'll do for you. Let's see here. I'm going to grab some raw sienna. One example that I will take you through. It would just be simple enough. I'm just trying to think something that's not going to take as long as a canoe paddle or a fishing pole. Pretty much created the same way though. Need some more burnt sienna for this. Is a rope. Sorry. I was getting to that. A oh, nice rope. I've got to tie the canoe off. Can't just have it sitting there. So. Right over the side here. Let me just think about where I want this to go. So here's a good example. Let's, if I can find my pencil. Okay. So I, a lot of times, this is just another good tip. If I'm gonna add something, I'll take just a regular old pencil and I'll think about where that rope's gonna be. So I want that rope to come maybe just, maybe up over right here, down, maybe, over right here. Yeah, okay, let's have it come up like right here. Kind of come down. Right there. Now, it's hard to see that at all. It's really hard to see if you're looking at it straight on, but if you kind of go over towards the light and I'm looking at it from the side, I can see where that is. kind of shines. Now, I'm just going to add dots along that edge. So now I know where that is. This one's kind of a little bit too fat for me. Okay. I can just kind of connect the dots. And 
right off the edge right there. Let's see. I don't really like that. I'm going to take some water. My finger, then a rag. Kind of wipe that part off. Try this again. Where do I want this to go? I just want kind of a curve to it. All right, that looks a little better. I just wanted some character to that. I can make this one up here, this part of it, just a little bit wider. Okay, first things first is it needs a shadow. Just gotta think about those, those little small details. Right there, a shadow. Just right along the rim. Maybe this whole area kind of shaded. And some of that, and just kind of wipe some of that away. Okay, so we have it kind of shaded. Now I can take some more black, mix with some burnt sienna. Now we need to have the pattern of this rope. So we're going to have these little black lines. You know what, before the black lines, just kind of create a darker burnt sienna, like a shadow. Just to go on the back side of the rope. Okay, now some more black underneath here on the bottom where it's touching the ground. I want some kind of a shadow there. All right. Now I'm going to take more of this darker black, a little bit of brown in that, not a true black. And I want to create that pattern. Okay. Now I'm going to take a white burnt sienna, this raw sienna. I'm going to do the same thing from the other way, just a little lighter color. And try to get in between those lines. The more of a white up top where that sunlight's going to hit it. And just like that, we've got a rope started.
Now I might darken some of it. Some burnt sienna, some black. Maybe just this part right through here. We've got some of it that's going to be kind of hidden behind the canoe. Yeah, it looks a little better. So just small details like that. It doesn't look like much, but as we start to stack up the other details around it, it's going to look pretty nice. And I might go back, just kind of clean up a few things with that rope as well. And I can always make adjustments, but for the most part, we've got a nice looking canoe. I'm going to continue working on the rest of this. Um, adding more things to the canoe itself. I might add some accessories inside, just kind of see how it goes. But I think our canoe is very close. So I'm going to call that tentatively finished. Well, a little side note about the canoe. I stood back a few minutes here, just kind of looked at what I did. And I really love the canoe. I thought that, that the canoe was coming together just perfectly. But when I added the rope at the end, there's just something about it that I don't know if it distracts from the canoe, if the rope is just too thick, too fat of a rope, or maybe I just need to hide some of the rope with maybe some foliage up front. So if you see me add some foliage later in the painting, that's probably why. Um, I can get rid of the rope at any time if I want to. It's just a matter of just taking that color that I mixed for the canoe and just covering it up. So I might adjust the rope. I'm not sure if I like it or not. But what I've learned in the past is that you can get ahead of yourself by thinking that you don't like something. And, and what you'll find is that if you just leave it, move on to everything else that you have planned around that area. So whether this is a rope or maybe it's the backpack or the campfire or say I put a canoe paddle in here, that object can seem distracting when it's just alone. So right now, the only object we've really added to accessorize the foreground is this rope. And I'm kind of just staring right at the rope. And so what I'm going to do is leave it and I'm going to add everything else that I want to, everything else that I've had planned for the painting, I'm going to add that and then kind of determine whether that rope is really not, uh, is really out of place or not such a big deal. And I'll be able to know more about that once I get to that point. So for right now, I'm going to leave what we have. I'm very happy with the canoe overall. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned some of this. Um, I think that I'm going to go ahead and finish this painting. I really need to focus, get to work on this. So this is probably the last thing you'll see before the time lapse. I hope you enjoyed. Please ask questions if you have any. And also check out my free print giveaway, as always, if you haven't already, as well as my eBay auctions and website. All of those links are in the description below. Thank you again so much for watching. See you next time.